What's up, everyone? In the trenches, back after the AFC East host Cam Newton just came out. Go check it out. Subscribe, listen, comment, give us all your questions. Future, maybe some future giveaways someday. I don't know. I haven't thought about it yet, but maybe. Uh, so tonight we're going to talk about the AFC North. Some people may say it's the most exciting division. Uh, and most people would be like, oh, the Steelers are one of the better teams. Myself and Coach Kelly disagree. Johnny, tell us why. You have the Steelers in second place and not the Browns. Well, I, I think it's more. it has more to do with the Browns than the Steelers. I, um, I think the Steelers are, first of all, I absolutely adore Mike Tomlin. I think he's, I mean, if, if that guy is not mentioned immediately as like one of the top five coaches, maybe top three coaches in the league, just how long he's been doing it. He's won a title that he's been stripped of talent year after year after year, even last year. You know, I remember when we traded, Mick, the Dolphins traded Mika Fitzpatrick and, you know, Big Ben had just gone down. I'm like, great, man, we're going to have a top five pick. No, he got that team, you know, to, I what was it, you know, eight wins, nine wins, whatever it was. He was playing third stringers, four stringers. He could have had me a quarterback and he probably would have won the game. You know, he, he's a great, that, right? great, great coach. That defense balled out for him last year, kept him in games. You know, obviously, they're not as talented on paper as the Ravens. And obviously, Lamar Jackson what was the story last year. But you, you could never count out Mike Tomlin. You can never count out his coaching. You can never count out how much his players are going to play for him. And, and they're going to find a way to win games. Now, the Browns are the more talented team on paper. There is no doubt. When you have back-to-back -back number one overall picks, you know, well, first of all, you kind of suck, but then you are, you are rebuilding. They've hit on a lot of moves that they've made, but I, like we talked about this earlier in the, earlier in the year, I always, and I always see the Browns as a bunch of guys on a team, a bunch of really, really good players on a team, but not a team. And they need to put it together. I don't know if their coach is the one that's going to help them put it together. If they can put it together, they got enough talent not to just overtake the Steelers, but they got enough talent to win that division uh, on paper. But again, it's always OBJ and Landry and Garrett and Garrett's throwing people's helmets off and, you know, Baker's taking a step back and the city of Cleveland, uh, you know, we had so much hope and now this team's letting us down and this guy's doing this and this guy's doing... It's just drama. And it's like, they're better than that. At least on paper, they are definitely better than that. But they need to be coached in unison. And I don't know if that could happen, um, which is why I'm still picking the Steelers. Not saying if the Browns finish first, you, you heard it here. They got the talent to do it. I don't think they're going to because I think their egos are kind of going to get in the way. Now, you're definitely not going to walk past what happened last year with Garrett and the Steelers. It's a division game. You can't just mention that and not talk about it. Yeah, it's old news. We're still going to talk about it. That's why we have a coach here. Coach, I know there was there was no one right in this case. Garrett should not have swung a helmet at, at, at someone. And um, whatever, I, I have not read all the reports, but whatever happened, happens. Uh, how does Garrett affect uh, – whoa, sorry, better question. How do you react as a coach? You know, how could you – correct the player or how do you handle that situation? How would you handle that situation? Uh, that's a tough situation because uh, as you all said, it, it's a heated game. It's a divisional game. It, it's a long, a, a long tradition, historic game in that conference. Miles um, Garrett being the up, uh, up and coming star that he is um, for the Cleveland Browns and in the NFL, he has to learn to play with passion, but not lose his emotion when, when he's in a critical game like that. Um, the, the, <clears throat> the momentum of the game changed so much with him being ejected and him being suspended for the rest of the season um, because of that. Um, I, I think as a coach, I would have just went to the sideline, you know, talked to Miles, said, um, you know, you're a great player, you play with passion, but you just have to play in control. Regardless of what was said or what was done to him, he should have just let the referees control the game. 
And when he reacted to whatever was said or whatever was done to him, the referees did um, control the game, and he got the short end of the stick. And the Cleveland Browns and the fans ended up getting the short end of the stick. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it affected the Browns, and it cost them a lot of games. Yes. Um, now, this is a new season. Uh, I, I, he, he should be playing. I, I know he just got a huge contract. Um, so he should be playing, and I, I think he's got like a tour. I think he's got like a a two or a four game suspension to start the year. He does have to serve a little bit of time, so to speak. <laughs> but um, but uh, he he will be he will be available, and I think I'm pretty sure he is healthy. But I think he's gonna have to miss I think at least two games for suspension because of that incident. All right. Well, I, I I'm very much looking forward to him getting back into the league because the Browns. Yeah. I think the Browns are very, and not only myself being, but everyone thinks the Browns are a very exciting team to watch. Um, and they, coaching problems, you know, there's a lot of storylines there. OBJ, he's great. Uh, he could be sort of a prima donna sometimes. Um, but I think Landry, since they do have that connection from college and LSU, uh, OBJ has kind of calmed down, and I think he's more about winning. He hasn't been in the headlines a lot. Um, Baker Mayfield, I think. Is super underrated in the NFL per se. I think he plays a lot better than what his numbers say. Um, and one of the best running backs in the league, in Nick Chubbs, you know, if not the best running back in the league. Um, that being said, let's leave the Browns and the Pittsburgh Steelers alone for a little while. And we're going to start from the bottom up, like always, with the Cincinnati Bengals. And George, this one's for you. Uh, Johnny, <laughs> give Jorito. Uh, the the lowdown on why the Browns, even though they do have Joe Burrows, be last place in the division again. Well, I was I was fortunate enough to go with Jorito and his and his current wife uh, years upon years ago to Paul Brown Stadium. I think it is still known as Paul Brown Stadium. We actually went to Cincinnati because he is a lot, lifetime Bengals fan. I haven't been able to figure out why he's a lifetime Bengals fan, but he's a lifetime Bengals fan. Um. Cincinnati is a pretty, very nice city, you know, a uh, very nice stadium. Um, the Bengals went through the red, like he calls them the red rifle, went through the Andy Dalton years. Uh, A.J. Green got hurt. They had, uh, you know, a uh, running back by committee. Um, they had the, what was it? Uh, it was Lovey Smith. The Lovey Smith, was it Lovey Smith? Well, no. Yeah. Coach, was, answer that one. I'm, no, I'm, what was, I'm, the, what was the coach? It wasn't Lovey Smith. It was um, um, from uh, oh, my the God. Bengals. God, I can't remember. Marvin name, Lewis. Marvin yeah, Lewis. Marvin Lewis. Yeah. Martin Lewis. That he was there forever, just could not take that step. Yeah. Um, finally, and they had some good games. They they had good oh, games. Yeah. The playoffs. They, they went. They got and the playoffs, You know, put up pretty yeah. good numbers. They just absolutely. You know, it was, um, it was a case of losing to the better team. I think. Right. Um, then I mean, I like everybody down here in Miami. Tank for two zero. Well, they 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 you know they. They blew it for Burrow, you know, and they finally got their guy. They got the guy with the absolute number one statistical season in college football history and capped it off with a national title. Yes, you could say he played on a stacked team. You could totally make that, that, that argument, and I would understand it. But, again, I've told this story. The day of the national championship game, I walked in to, to, to watch the game with a couple of buddies of mine, and LSU was down. And one of them – says to me, he goes, hey, man, I thought LSU was going to win. I told him, Joe Burrow is a lot like Tom Brady in this sense. He does not panic. He has a swagger. He has a moxie. It doesn't matter if he's up 40 or down 40. That guy does not panic. Sure enough, in about five minutes, they were up 10, and they never looked back. Um, Joe Burrow was an amazing pick. I think he's got the tools to be an NFL caliber quarterback. I don't know how great he's going to be because I don't know if Cincinnati is the place to get him there. Um, I hope it is for the sake of Cincinnati, for the sake of the, the franchise, and for the sake of football. It's, it's always good when teams elevate themselves. Um, I don't, again, I think he was the right pick. Uh, I, think he, I think he has a chance to be something great. I just don't know if Cincinnati is the place to do it. And because they had the number one overall pick, they're obviously rebuilding. They've done a good job. They're going to get A.J. Green back. But in that division, I mean, it's, it's black and blue all over. They're going to beat each other up. And at the end of the day, I mean, they're looking at another top five pick, in my, in my opinion. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I, I just, I, I don't see them. Look, I'll, I'll add on to what, what you said about Joe Burrows. I, he, in the national, in the national championship, impressed me. Uh, I did not think that uh, they were going to be Clemson. I thought Clemson. I, I, I've seen Clemson more than LSU, to be honest. Um, but I, I didn't think LSU had what it took to, to, to dethrone Clemson. Uh, but they did. Uh, and the beginning of the game was super exciting. And, and the game, it was a good game. But you just saw the different level of play from Joe, uh, from Joe Burrow. And he just took over the game. And that swagger, that, that's what you look for in, in a quarterback in the NFL. That he has the talents, but he, he also has the attitude and the leadership to lead your team to winning. And in a team like Cincinnati, you really need that. You really need like that. I don't want to say bad boy mentality because I don't think he's like a Baker Mayfield, you know, bad boy. But he definitely has a talent and the attitude to to be successful in Cincinnati. But does he have the pieces? I don't even know what Vegas says. Um, but coach, give me your thoughts on 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 Cincinnati Bengals, man. What do you think? Um, Joe Joe Burrow. Um, as I can agree with you all, uh, he's the leader. Uh, Joe Burrow can make those uh, pro pro passes that are needed on the next level. Um, he he he's kind of coming into a team that has a a pretty good group of receivers with AJ Green, John Ross, and I think they added um what's the guy name Higgins, T Higgins. Yeah, yeah. So so, so that's T the, Higgins, uh, water, uh, Clemson wide receiver. Yeah, and they also have uh, Tyler Boyd also. And, and Joe Mixon is the running back back there. I think he might be the, you know, he might be the guy back there in the backfield to, to, to uh, carry. Yeah, they, 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 they draft, in the sixth round, they drafted an a offensive tackle uh, out of Kansas, uh, Hakeem. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of defense in the draft, though. There was a lot of defensive moves in the draft. Other than Joe Burrows and the number one overall pick, that's an obvious where right. Joe Burrows was going to be the guy because it, some people say because of Tua's injury. I, mm -hmm. I don't – look, I'm a Dolphin fan. I'm super excited to have Tua finally. But I'm not a guy that says Tua's better than Burrows. Um, yeah. I, I, I think Burrows that. is better than Tua. Uh, John, <laughs> and the, uh, I, 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 that, I say that. I totally say that. I have always said that. will always say that. Tua's better than Burrows. That's my uh, – unless something happens to change my mind, that's what I think. I don't about that if you want, but I don't think Tua's better than Burrows. But well, I mean, one thing I can't I can't say in, in defense for Burrow too. He does come from a football factory in LSU. Uh, I mean, LSU has a long history of putting out a lot of great players at every position for the game. Yeah. LSU has been great for the game of football. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I I will add this. Name me, and maybe you guys can name me because I again I, I'm I'm a little bit younger. So name me an Alabama quarterback that has been successful. And the last one, I believe, was in Cincinnati and never saw the playing field. So, and if he did, he was for a few games. And then that was uh, AJ, uh, what was his last name? I can't remember his last McCarran. name. McCarron. McCarron, there you go. And to answer your question, I'll name you two. Joe Namath and Ken Stabler. All right, whatever. We're, we're, we're going <laughs> off the topic. You know, you know, I mean, it, it, it's, a long, it's been a long time since, but you're talking about one of the best quarterbacks of the 70s, and a guy who won Super Bowl MVP is a Hall of Famer. I had no idea Joe Namath was, was from Alabama. Wow. You learn something every day. Yeah. Um, the, the Bengals spend a lot of money on defense, too, to kind of address a lot of holes on defense. So they have veteran leadership on that defense coming in to the locker room this season. Yeah. They're, they might have a lot of veterans, but mm – -hmm. You know, in that type of – look, you have to play the MVP twice. You have to play a Browns team that if they figure it out – on paper, they're better than you. And even if they don't figure it out, they're still better than you. Unless Joe Burrow has, like, a coming out party for his rookie year against the Browns, which it, it may be, but eh, I, I, I just don't see the Cincinnati Bengals with the talent that they have. Or, sorry, not with the talent, but with the – the, the issues and the question marks that they have in, in their team, I don't see them being any better than fourth in this division. It, it's a right. rough division. Oh, yeah, it, it definitely is. I mean, I can, I can agree. I mean, Joe Burrows has proved himself to be a great college quarterback. And coming into the NFL, 
he'll probably be a good to great college quarterback, but he'll have his growing pains. Vegas has a line set for the Bengals uh, for an over and under for wins at five and a half. Um, I think the Bengals can squeeze six games out of their uh, schedule. The, the over is minus 125. So, so, so I think that's where I'm putting my money is um, – with You're saying over, over five, over, over five, five. over five, and, and it's just going to be squeezing out at six. My God, I, I still find that high. I mean, I, I know that's that's a terrible thing to say, but <laughs> I still find that high. I mean, but, I but really do. Yeah, I mean, I see them under five. I'll take the under on that. I see them a four and twelve team um, if everything goes well. Because at the end of the day, six of your games that are against the Browns. The uh, the Steelers and and the, and the Ravens. I mean, that's arguably not for sure, but arguably six losses. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. not to say that, that they're not going to win one or two, but then and then the rest of the schedule. You know, are they talented enough to win the? Re- you know, maybe they. Let, let's let's say they go one in five in those games. Mm-hmm. You know, are they going to go? Are they going to win what? What basically five to go five hundred against everybody else? I don't see it. I don't think they're that talented. I, I not so not this year. Going Jeff, forward, yeah, but not this year. Let's you have the schedule, uh, Chef. What was that? You have the schedule, Chef. I'm actually about to. Uh, I'm going to give you my prediction right here. How about that? I'll give you a full schedule on the Cincinnati Bengals and how many wins they're going to have. At Cleveland's, sorry, week one, they're at home. The Chargers. The Chargers have a lot of question marks, but the Chargers are just better than they are. I, I, I don't see them winning week. I, I don't see Jer- Bur- Joe Burrows winning his first game in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a loss. At Cleveland, that's a loss. At Philadelphia, that's a loss. Mm-hmm. Jacksonville, maybe that's your one. You, let, let's Okay, let's give them one. In, yeah. At home, Jacksonville, we'll give them Jacksonville. At Baltimore, for sure not. At the Colts? The Colts are going to be one of the best teams in the AFC at home. No. Uh, now, Cleveland at home, if best, best, best case scenario, Cincinnati plays a very tough defensive game. Um, you hold down Nick Chubbs and you do everything right. I still don't see them beating Cleveland because mm. you have to stop Nick Chubbs and eventually Nick Chubbs will wear down that defense. I don't see them be- beating Cleveland at all this year. Um, Tennessee, again, another big running back. You can control the clock. If Burroughs shows some sort of, you know, he's putting up some numbers, some good numbers, like uh, Cal Murray last year put up some pretty good numbers with Arizona, and it was his rookie year. If you see that, you can control the clock a little bit more. You're pounding Derrick Henry. Um, I don't see them beating Tennessee. Then you get your bye week. And right after your bye week, at Pittsburgh, at Washington, two wins. I'll give him Washington two wins. At home with the Giants, again, a young team, uh, but I don't see them being the Giants. The Giants are too good um, for that, that type of a team. At Miami, last year was a super exciting game, and they probably both should have not showed up to the field, but they did, and they played it. Uh, at Miami, I'm, I'm going to say Miami at home. I'll take Miami, and not because I'm a Dolphin fan, because Miami is just a better team. Uh, Dallas, not going to happen. Pittsburgh, maybe if you say they split, but I still don't see that happening. At Houston, by this this time of the year, Houston is either in the playoffs or they're completely out of the playoffs, and it's the battle for the third overall pick in the NFL. Uh, For the Dolphins' sake, I hope so. And then you end the year at Baltimore. If Baltimore has already clinched the division and they already have their, you know, Let's let's put the scenario out that they're first or second seed. Maybe you see a benching of um, uh, Jackson, and you don't have to deal with Jackson. But even with those bench players, it's a tough game. So I see maybe three games, and I, I'm going to give them Baltimore just because I expect Baltimore to already have the division locked down. Um, I'll give them Baltimore at home at the end of the year to end the year on a good note. But over five games, I definitely don't see that this year. Mm-hmm. So I would bet. Can you bet the under on that? I don't even yeah, know. of course. You can take. As a matter of fact, the, the the under is giving you back dollar for dollar on the bet too. It's a plus one hundred five. Yeah, I'll take that under five games for sure. That's an easy bet. Um, listen, so, 
Burrow could come in and just light everything up. Like you said, Callum Murray had a great rookie season. Maybe maybe things just click. Him and AJ Green click. They win a couple of games on the last play. And yeah, maybe they could get to six wins. But I don't think they're ready this year with everything that they have going on with acclimating Joe Burrow to, 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 to the pro level, with A.J. Green coming back off injury, you know, with the defense gelling, with their coaching staff. There's too many factors there that have to go right. I'm not saying they can't. I'm not saying Joe Burrow can't be that guy to come in and win rookie of the year and just, you know, lights out. Like what Baker Mayfield did his rookie year, they came in and he just started winning games left and right. I'm not saying he can't do that, but based on how short they are on, on overall talent, especially in that division, I just don't see them going over five games. Yeah, I don't. I, I, I don't see it. Um, but bright light at the end of the tunnel for Cincinnati is that you, you possibly have – not possibly, you for sure have a, a, a career guy in, in Jerbo. Oh, yeah. um, he's going to be amazing to watch. Uh, how bad Cincinnati is, I'll still tune in to watch how good Joe Burrow is yeah. going to be. Uh, right. That's the exciting part about it is that you, you have your your quarterback going, and not and not that Andy Dalton was not, but Andy Dalton is at the end of his career, and it was the right time, it was the, the right move to let go of Andy Dalton and move on with uh, Joe Burrow and just give him the go. Um, and uh, George, we look forward to hearing your your uh, your comments on how we talk shit about your team. Um, <laughs> so going forward, let's say, look, just because the Sears have always been first or second place team in the past, God knows how long, and they have one of my favorite defenses to ever watch when Troy Panamano was there, and they were just so fun to watch. Um, I don't think the talent is there, but I'm on the Cleveland Browns now. Um, listen, listen, listen. We we should majority rules. If you guys both say that the Browns are gonna overtake the Steelers, even as by one game, I will fall in line. Because by the way, I don't think there's as much as I think there's a there's a better talent level on the Browns when the records are finalized at the end of the year. I don't think there's gonna be that much difference in their records that you you could flip flop them. You know, one could be ten and six, one could be nine and seven. I think they're right there. So if you want to say Let's go with the Steelers third. We can go with the Steelers third. There's right. a couple of things that I definitely want to touch on, especially for Dolphin fans. <laughs> I'm going to give you the mic right now. Let's go with the Steelers. Uh, let's go Pittsburgh Steelers. I predicted in our first show that this would be the first year in, again, God knows how long, that the Pittsburgh Steelers and the New England Patriots will be out of the playoffs. And like wow. you said, it's going to be the, that close – like the Patriots and Dolphins, it might flip flop. It, it's going to be very close. It's not like one team is so much better than the other. Right. But I do have the Pittsburgh Steelers out of the playoffs and the New England Patriots out of the playoffs. And we'll talk about the Steelers. And please enlighten us on what you want to talk about. The first thing and the first person, and I start at the top, has to be Mike Tomlin. And any Dolphin fan out there listening either knows this or doesn't know it and is going to cry once hearing this. In 2007, the Miami Dolphins had the chance to hire Mike Tomlin after Nick Saban left back to Alabama. They decided to not hire Mike Tomlin. They hired a guy named Cam Cameron and proceeded to go 1-15. Oh, my. <laughs> a year and a half later, Mike Tomlin was raising the Lombardi Trophy as his Pittsburgh Steelers narrowly beat right, the Arizona right. Cardinals. No, okay, okay, right. Coach K, take over. I can't hear this. Since again. then, <laughs> since, I'm not done. Since then, Mike Tomlin has proven over and over and over and over again how great of a coach he is. Yes, I, I think the Steelers are one of the best organizations, not just in football, in pro sports. They date back to the 30s. You know, they're one of the oldest teams of all, of all time, you know, and they, they have a tremendous career, tremendous, you know, six Super Bowls, tr great city. I've actually been, I went to Three Rivers back in 94, uh, you know, tremendous city, tremendous football town. Um, Tomlin is amazing. Even last year, he lost Big Ben and we traded, we being the, the Miami Dolphins, traded Mika Fitzpatrick to him. I thought it was going to be great because we were going to get back a number one pick and we were going to get back a top five pick because there was no way that Tomlin was going to win with Mason Rudolph and, the, and, and the, what he had. 
he decided to just rip off, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten wins, you know, with a fourth string quarterback. He could have had anybody a quarter, and he still made it happen because he's that good of a coach. Um, now, still, they've lost talent. Big Ben, who's pretty much at the end of his rope, let's be honest. He's he doesn't have a lot left in the tank because his his body has broken down over time. He's a, to me, there's no doubt in my mind he's a Hall of Fame quarterback. Uh, but he okay. is on, on, you know, he's he's on the way out. I don't know if they think that Mason Rudolph is is the next is the heir apparent. I don't think he is. I think he's good. I liked him in college. Um, I think you could develop him or try to develop him. I don't think he is. Um, you know, they still have talent. They still have James Conner. Love him or hate him, with a good offensive line, everybody healthy. James Conner supplanted when they when they lost Le'Veon Bell. James Conner ran ran, ran rough shot last year. He got hurt. You know that defense allowed only what 14, 15 points a game. Kept him in every kept him in every single game. You know, and even in that division, which is very very tough with the upstart, you know, with the very talented Browns, the upstart Bengals, and the Lamar Jackson led Baltimore Ravens who were a couple, a couple of steps away from the Super Bowl last year and are vying to get back there this year, you know, that team still runs with the big boys. Um, now, if you want to say that the Browns are talented enough to overtake them because Big Ben breaks down, I can see that. But I, unlike the Miami Dolphins, will not bet against Mike Tomlin. If you guys want to say that they're going to finish third, I'm going to say they're going to finish with the same record as the Cleveland Browns and they'll lose on a tiebreaker because they're, I don't think they're that much better. The Browns are that much better than them, you know, and I'm not going against Mike Tomlin. That's what I think about the Pittsburgh Steelers. I, I do agree. And uh, now you should say about Mike Tomlin, I'm going to go cry tonight because <laughs> I am a huge Mike Tomlin fan. And I'm not going to say who it is because I honestly don't know who it was and much respect to everyone at ESPN, but I heard – uh, one time that someone said Mike Tomlin is not a, pretty much saying he's not a good coach in the NFL, and I think you're out of your fucking mind. Like, let's put it that way. I think you're like, – I'm not an expert. I'm just some guy that watches football, and, and I all of a sudden decided to do a podcast and we could all talk about football here together. But at the end of the day, if you're telling me Mike Tomlin is not a good coach, you don't know anything about football. You're, you know, football. Just, you're either just trying to grab on for people to listen to you. Like, yeah. just stop. Um, Mike Tomlin, since the second he became the head coach at Pittsburgh, has dominated the NFL. Um, and maybe it was the players, and you can go, oh, he had an amazing defense, and he had players, and this and that. But let me tell you something. I watched that Dolphins game last year, and with the scrubs that he had on that team, uh, it's a good team. Some people have the Steelers winning the division this year. Uh, and that's saying a lot because you have the MVP in that division, you know, like you're going to tell me that the Steelers are going to win the division. Maybe you're pushing it a little bit far, but everyone has their opinion. That's, that's a good thing. Um, I'm going to go by the, I'm going to go give you the, the schedule and we're going to get right into the schedule. And then I'll let coach K tell me what Vegas thinks about the Steelers. And, you know, maybe I might place a little bet here on the Steelers. I'll tell you what. Yeah, can I say something right quick? Sure, yeah, man. go ahead, coach. Uh, you know, just to kind of go along with y'all, you know, kudos to Mike Tomlin and his coaching staff for the season, what they had last year. Mike Tomlin and his staff pulled off with three different quarterbacks, <laughs> a slew of other injuries. Uh, their star wide receiver, which is one of my son's favorite players, Juju Smith McShuster, um, in, uh, injuries. I do think he's a little overrated. But... And, and they just believed in the philosophy, next man up. The next man up, next man yep. up. And they just continue to do that, and they continue to play the game of football the way Coach Tomlin and his staff designed the game, you know, for them to play, and they were – they had success. I mean, um, I, I, I can agree with Box. As the injuries progressed and everything, I became excited for um, an earlier draft pick for the Dolphins. But it's like every time you turned around – you cussing and fussing, what the hell is going on? Why do they, these guys keep winning? You know, and it has a lot to do with Mike Tomlin, his defense, the way they draft, and the way they made moves in the offseason. And I have to give a shout-out to a South Florida kid that, that's um, an up-and-coming star on the Steelers, Devin Bush Jr., um, star player in high school and in college, and, and, and he's going to do some great things for the Steelers also. 
Yeah. One, one right? thing that, that, that Box told me a while back, the difference between the Steelers, the, let's say the Patriots, so those teams that are always on top, um, is that thanks to their front office, they know how to draft. They're not busting players on drafts. They draft eight guys, and six of those eight are either playing on their team or they're playing somewhere else and being, you know, good players. I'm not saying they have superstars every time they draft, but guys that have careers in the NFL and that you can rely on, you know. Um, and that's the biggest difference is that the backup at the Steelers is better than the backup at the Browns or yeah. better than the backup at the, at the Dolphins. You know, I'm going to call it my own team. We don't have a slew of draft picks, and we're always successful. We always mess up all the drafts, and we always have, you know – Look, he's had, he's had a great career, and I believe he's won a Super Bowl, Tegan Jr. I pull my hair every time I hear Tegan Jr. was picked as high as he was. Right. You know? But the By Steelers the way, don't he, have he that. Has not won, he has not won a Super Bowl. He has played in two, however. With two he has played in two, and he's lost both. But he, ha- but he has not won one yet. He's had a, he's had a, a good career. You know? I love a career. And he's still playing today. So, uh, But was he the right pick at the time? Hell no. No, oh, he could be as speedy as a, you could, you're not going to draft a, a, a special teams wide receiver in that pick. In that pick, you take the best, even if the best offensive lineman is not the best offensive lineman, you still take him. You know, you take a defensive end, you take a linebacker, you take anyone else but him at that pick. A cornerstone. Um, yeah. Oh, what, what was that? A, corner, a cornerstone for your team. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. exactly. So let's get into the schedule. They start at the Giants. It's a dangerous game. I'm going to give them the win. But it is, it, that is a very dangerous game starting in New York. You, there's a lot of energy with Shaquan Barkley. Uh, there's a lot going on with that team. And maybe this is a start of a step up for the Giants. But I'm going to say the Steelers win that game. At, uh, they get Denver and Houston at home. Uh, they should be Houston. Denver is another one of those games where question mark, uh, but they should beat Denver. I'm going to give them wins, so they're going to start three and zero. Yep. Um, at Tennessee, I see them. That's their first loss. I see at Tennessee, uh, okay. it's going to be one of these defensive games most likely, um, and I just see the better, better team winning. I think Tennessee's more times than them. At Tennessee, I'll give the Steelers their first loss of the season. At home in Philadelphia, or sorry, they get Philadelphia at home. Uh, and then Cleveland at home. Uh, I will say they lose to Philadelphia. I, I think Philadelphia is going to be a, a, a good team, and it's a it's going to be a hard fought win for them. But that might be one of their uh, away wins, if you want to say. Um, at home, Cleveland. I'll give them Cleveland. I think they split with Cleveland, so I'm going to give them uh, Cleveland here. At Baltimore. You toss a coin, but you can toss a coin with with the Ravens and Steelers. Those games are always, always so good, and it's always last, you know, five minutes of the game. Very rarely do you see a team blow another team out. But at home, I'll take Baltimore. Then they get the bye week. Then they go to Dallas. I'll give Dallas that. Uh, Cincinnati, they're going to beat Cincinnati. They're going to beat Jacksonville. You can put the game in London. They're going to beat Jacksonville. Um, Baltimore at home, I'll give them Baltimore. Washington, uh, they're going to beat Washington. At Buffalo, now we're talking. That is maybe a playoff preview there. Um, I'm going to say the Bills beat them. At Cincinnati, I don't see Cincinnati beating them. Uh, The Colts, that's another one that maybe is a playoff preview, and it's going to be a late-season playoff preview. Uh, at home, Colts, I see the Colts going into Pittsburgh and winning. And then at Cleveland, I'll give Cleveland that one because uh, I said that they would split. So, Kay, what do you think? What is Vegas saying? Well, well, well Vegas doesn't know their self what to say on this one. <laughs> they, they have the over and under both at minus 110. So, you could bet either side, you'll get the same amount of money back. So uh, uh, ah. the, the line is set at nine games. The over under is set at nine games. That's so a, that's a tough bet, man. Yeah. So that's so a very tough I, bet. 
I, like, I, that's a push right there. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's a hell but, of a push I mean, right there. Yeah, basically, basically, I wrote down the Steelers at nine and seven. You know, w- 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 with some rough games against the Browns and maybe the Bengals slipping one, and um, probably taking one over the Ravens. I, I, you know, they'll and then the other out of division games. I, I have them at nine and seven, but 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 uh, the the AFC North is going to be um, a very interesting conference this season. Yeah, and I think for the first time in a long time, we could actually say that I'm excited to watch Cleveland play Pittsburgh. Like, yeah. <laughs> we're always excited to watch Pittsburgh and, and, and Baltimore because, right. you know, Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, obviously the U. We all know it's all about the U. And mm-hmm. I, I don't – I'll say this all the time. I hated watching the Ravens pound the Dolphins all the time, every time they play. But there was just something about watching Ray Lewis and Ed Reed dominate the NFL the way they did. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And those games are always super, super, super exciting to watch. You can talk, you can talk all day long about those games. Um, but for the first time in a long time, I'm excited to watch Nick Chubbs and that defense play. I'm excited to watch Baker Mayfield go up against Big Ben. I'm excited to watch, uh, you know, Fitzpatrick and Landry. And, you know, it, there, there's a topic here where you can go, this is actually – this should be a very competitive uh, division. Other than Cincinnati, and, you know, hey, if Joe Burrows comes into the NFL and he starts blowing teams up, then he, he's a real deal. But I don't think it's going to happen. Um, but that's your Steelers talk. Johnny, you got anything else? It, it, it looks like you have something to add about the Steelers. No, no, no. That's, um, I, I, like I said, I, I just think it's a push at nine games. Um, yeah. I, they're gonna, I think they're, they're going to be right in that, in, in that level between them and the Browns of, you know, like, like, like what you're saying. You know, they could lose to Cincinnati and beat Baltimore, and they could sweep Cincinnati and get swept by Baltimore, and, and they could split with the, with the Browns, and they could, you know, go into Dallas and beat Dallas, but then come back and lose to the Eagles. It, it, I think they're right there. Um, and it's and at the end, it, as, much, as much as I, I, I've already said how much I love Mike Tomlin, it's going to also depend on how, how ultimately I don't think they could do this year because of that schedule what they did last year. Big Ben has to come back. He's got to be healthy because if he's not, I don't think they can get to nine games this year. I really don't. Uh, Mason Rudolph, they might make it interesting. They might make it fun to watch, but I don't think they can get to nine wins without Big Ben. Yeah, and Connor's a good uh, Connor's a good running back, and they, they always seem to figure out who the running back is there, and there always seems to be a good running back in that team, all the way back to, like, Willie Parker. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But if Big Ben goes down – you're you're getting into a real not not to say that their their schedule's like super super tough, but uh, you're you're getting into a situation where you know this isn't last year and now people have video on Mason Rudolph. They know what you're gonna try to do with Mason Rudolph. A lot of those plays were like not trick plays per se, but there were like situ, uh, situational drawn up plays for Mason Rudolph. It was probably a very short right. playbook um, just made for him. And now that the NFL has had has video on him and knows how what he's going to look like in the NFL, uh, if the situation is that Mason Rudolph is playing and starting at quarterback, his receivers are going to have a very tough time. Um, and that's just the way of the NFL. You, you know, players blow up and very – it's very unlike we see like a Patrick Mahomes or a Jackson. You know, you'll have that one big year. And then coaches – there's a reason why they're in the top league of the world in football and the only league in the world of football. Um, and they just figure it out and they watch video and they'll put schemes in and they'll blitz mm-hmm. you from different sides. And Mason Rudolph is either he's going to figure it out real quick that he's not there. The Pittsburgh Steelers will figure out that he's not the guy or they'll figure out that maybe he is the guy and he'll, they'll start winning some games. Um, but enough about the Steelers. Uh, enough crying about Mike Tomlin. Um, and... <laughs> Let's move on to uh, the Cleveland Browns. They – a lot of drama last year. Uh, coaching, horrible coaching. I saw multiple games of Cleveland Browns, and I could not understand. I don't think anyone in the NFL understands why they had such a bad year when they were predicted to, by a lot of people, win the division. Some people were even saying that the beginning of last year that they were going to win the division, and – they were the team to watch, and they were the team to beat. They just could not figure it out. They had a few bad losses, um, but they had glimpses of being a good team. Um, 
I think this year they figure it out. Uh, maybe because of leadership in the locker room, maybe because Nick Chubbs has a career a career year, maybe because uh, Baker Mayfield has a career year. Uh, I don't know the reason, but maybe you two could give me the reason of why you think. And I know Johnny, put yourself in our shoes and give us a reason why you think the Browns are going to be in second place. Um, first and foremost, the talent is there. I mean, the, the, the talent, I actually love Baker Mayfield coming out of college. I remember when he got drafted, there was speculation that he could, you know, drop to the Dolphins, the Dolphins could actually go up and get him. You know, uh, I loved him. He took a step back last year. I'm not saying he didn't, um, OBJ, they traded for him. They trade, you know, they signed Landry, they drafted Garrett. But at the end of the day, that defense was giving up 24.6 points last year. And if you give up 24.6 points in the NFL, you're not going to win a lot of games. And you sure as hell aren't going to go to the playoffs. And you sure as hell aren't going to live up to your, you know, preseason uh, 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 hype. Um, I've been, once again, with Jorjito, our friend Jorjito, we, w- we were lucky enough when we went to the Cincinnati trip, we actually went to Cleveland. And we uh, went to Jacobs Field. We saw, well, now it's called Progressive Field. And uh, we saw, you know, the dog pound and then how much that city loves their sports, considering the fact it's a city of losers because their they're teams have done nothing but lose. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, I think the Browns – Your boy you LeBron know, comes from there, bro. Come on. I know, I know. Um, <laughs> but, no, I, I think the Browns have, have established a really, really, really good team on paper. I mean, they, they've hit where they've needed to hit. They got Chubb. They got their receivers. They got their quarterback. They got Garrett. They've worked on their offensive line. They've, they, they, they added to their offensive line. You know, but I said it before, and I will say it again. I see the Browns as a bunch of guys on paper. I do not see the Browns as a team, not on paper or on the field. You know, I you 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 look at the Ravens. You look at you look at the other teams in the division. You know, you see a team. You know, can OBJ and Landry stop trying to outdo each other and stop playing this little you know off the field on Twitter? you know, little back and forth, you know, hype or whatever you want to call it and say, you know what, let's just shut up for a little while. Let's get on the field. Let's ball out like we can because we're two, you know, tremendous receivers and let's help Baker, you know, get back that magic that he had his rookie year. You know, let's keep Miles Garrett, Miles, Miles Garrett healthy. Let's keep him from, you know, ripping people's heads off and helmets off. You know, let's let, 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 let's coach this team correctly. Let's everybody, you know, take a step back. And in unison, we got the talent to even with, to, to win the division. I genuinely believe they have the talent to win the division. But again, I've always seen them as a bunch of guys on paper and not a team. And the teams that win and the teams that win consistently, the teams that go to the playoffs, yeah, they have, they have talent, they have stars, they have this, they have that. But they also have guys that you've never heard of that have 150 tackles and allow no sacks. And you've never heard of who he is, but that left guard is balling for them. Or that center is balling for them. Or that defensive tackle in the rotation, you know, is, is, is stopping the run on every major play in the game. And you don't know who he is, but he's doing it for the team. They need to find a way to get everybody, you know, all the talent and just mesh it together. If they can do that, I think they can go so far as to win the division. However, knowing them for who they are, I don't think they're going to be able to do that, at least not under Freddie Kitchens. Uh, they might be able to keep this team together, and maybe it might take another coaching change. Um, they have the talent to win and finish second this year, maybe even make a playoff run, but I don't see them getting any any, any further than that just because they, they, they can't get out of their own way. That's, that's what I feel about the Browns. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I agree. They – they have too many players. They have a lot of issues. Uh, I look Landry. I think is one of the best receivers in the league. I he's super. Not only that, he's one of the best, but I think he's super underrated for the type of receiver he is. He's a very Heinz Ward. He's gonna block for you. He's gonna do the dirty work. He's gonna get those third downs. And we saw that in Miami with a team that was subpar, almost garbage. I was gonna say um, atrocious. Yeah. <laughs> so. Look, Landry, Nick Chubbs is an amazing talent. Um, knock on wood, he doesn't get hurt. But I 
think I just think they're they're too good. Landry needs to if they are doing some sort of Twitter war with OBJ, shut up and get back to playing football. Um, uh, and you know you, you want to try to be nicer, but at the end of the day, uh, I want to see you. I want to see them be successful at, in the NFL. I want to see them prove to us that you are that team that's going to take the Browns to the next level. And by the next level, I don't mean Super Bowl. I mean, get to the playoffs, bro. Just get there. I want to see you in the playoffs. Uh, I would love to see Landry in the playoffs. I would love to see OBJ in the playoffs. I would love to see Baker Mayfield in the playoffs, uh, regardless of what their coach is. Um, their draft, they got a tackle. They got a safety. They got a defensive tackle. They got a linebacker. They got a tight end at the Florida, uh, Florida Atlantic. That's pretty cool. Uh, that guy's a beast, by the way. Very, very yeah. highly touted. Very highly touted. That's awesome, man. That's uh, – the Joku is there right now. And, uh, and by the way, uh, if I may real quick, you said they drafted a tackle and they drafted a safety. No, no, no. They drafted a hell of a tackle in Jedrick Gould fifth. Jr. from Alabama. And when they drafted the a hell of a safety in Grand Dover from LSU. Yeah, You know, you had tremendous talent in, in those first two picks. Now, again – Delpit's got a little bit of it, you know, an issue off the field, you know, a little brash guy from LSU, another brash guy from LSU on the roster. They already got two. They're going to add another one. But the talent is amazing. Delpit was. Who's the other guy from LSU there? Uh, 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 well, OBJ and, and, and Landry will both. Oh, that's right. Um, and they're both, you know, Sorry. brash guys from LSU. <laughs> I knew they were from LSU. Sorry. Delpit was a, an amazing talent. And Jedrick Wills Jr., you know, one of the best left tackles in, in, in football, in college football. Uh, some people say he's the most technically sound um, tackle in, in that, that came out this year. So you got both those guys. You, the talent is there. But again, play football, play as a team, play it on the field, and leave Twitter and, and, the, and the hype off the field. Let it go. You know, because that, that, that's one of the issues that Grant Delpit had at LSU. He was a brash talker, got himself into trouble off the field a little bit. And, you know, when you're in college, you know, it's fine. But now you're a pro, you can't continue to do that. Yeah. Just like Landry when he was down here. Yes, I love his energy. But you can't go out and start fights in the middle of the field and get 15-yard penalties every single game. Uh, that all of Landry's happen. fights, he was, he was in the right. I don't care what anyone says. That's what well, you can't. But you have to get to a point that you can't continue to do that because it will catch up to you. And, and you will hurt your team. As much as he helped the Miami Dolphins, as much as he caught 100 balls last year for the Cleveland Browns, he's going to hurt them with his brashness. He's got to – I'm, I'm not saying to get rid of it. I'm just saying you got to throttle it back a little bit, man, because you eventually it's going to catch up to you, and you're going to cost your team the game. You're yeah. going to have the penalty at the wrong time, and you're, and you're going to cost your team the game. And you're too freaking talented of a guy to, not, to let that happen. You know him, OBJ, everybody. That's that's like the that's something very interesting that that, that I think we're going to see this year about the Browns. They're they're in a situation where they're going to be in those probably prime time games, big time games where you might be facing a team that has the history behind you. Like maybe they're facing a Dallas, or I I I, I have the schedule here. We'll we'll, we'll get into it. Um, but you know, uh, actually, you know what? Now that I see that. I just said Dallas, and they're at Dallas. Uh, so let's go right into it. They hold, go. Hold on, hold on, Chef. Go ahead, Coach. Um, to add the box, uh, to add the box statement about what it takes for Cleveland to be great, too. Uh, of course, we all understand the defense needs to get better and not allow as many points on defense. But um, Baker Mayfield is key to that also. Last season, he completed around 59% of his passes, yeah. we, 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 we uh, need a better look from Baker Mayfield to, yeah. um, you know, get it together. And just to, you know, compliment too with another program that, that has been good to the NFL, Alabama, that was a great pick with um, Jedrick Willis Jr. Um, coming in to, to the Browns. And, and, all, and also from the other full from the other SEC football factory, the the, the um def defensive player also, but I believe if this O line gels, Cleveland will be very exciting to watch. They 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 have great players at all the key positions on offense, 
Um, they just need to come together. They have uh, – in, in the sixth round, pick 187, they picked a kid up from Michigan. I've never seen him play. Uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones. He's 6'2", 208. He's a big dude. That's uh, – I don't know if he's supposed to be the second guy next to OBJ. I don't know if that's why they drafted him. Maybe he's like a third or fourth wide receiver. Mm -hmm. But that's a hell of a lineup. If you got a guy that's 6'2", plus the speed of OBJ, plus you already have uh, – uh, you, you have a, a tight end coming in. Let's say Njoku is not there. That's, I guess, in the talks now. I don't know what's going on there. And they also have – didn't they get Hooper? Hooper's are starting tight end now. Hoopers are starting tight end, and they have – and they drafted a tight end. I, I guess Njoku got it because I, I, I can't see Njoku staying yeah. there. Uh, but this, this kid from Florida Atlantic, uh, Harrison Bryant, and I'm sorry I, I'm calling you a kid, but you're, you're now an NFL player, uh, 6'5 and 240. That is – look, you got a running game like Nick Chubbs. Baker Mayfield just has to be a good quarterback. Mm -hmm. doesn't even have to be a great quarterback. Like you said, complete the passes – Make the throws that you need to make, and the Browns are a very dangerous team. And their defense, like like Box said, um, has to step up. They have to play better. And I'm not saying that you have to be the number one defense in the NFL, but you can't allow 24 points. You can't expect your offense to always come back in games, late games, especially if you're playing these caliper games or you're playing the Steelers, you're playing the Ravens, and expect to go into Baltimore if you have to and win that game. Uh, you can't expect it, expect it from anyone. Like, it's not many teams could do that. So, their schedule. I said Baltimore. They're at Baltimore week one. I'm going to say, just because I'm a little biased on it, and I think uh, the Cleveland Browns are going to be better than people think, I think we see a slow start from, from Baltimore, and they're going to lose. At Baltimore, I'm going to give the Browns a win. Cincinnati, I'm going to give them a win. Washington, I'll give them the win. They're going to start 3-0 and just like the Steelers. And they'll lose week four because they go into Dallas. I don't see them being Dallas in, in Dallas. So they'll be 3-1 and one tied with the Steelers uh, or maybe, you know, first place in the division. Uh, we'll look at the schedule of the Ravens right after this. No, I'm playing. Uh, at Col or, sorry, Colts at home. Then they go to Pittsburgh, to Cincinnati. They get Vegas at home. They get Houston, Philadelphia at home. They go to Jacksonville, to Tennessee. That's a tough game. Maybe maybe in this time of the season, it might be a playoff. Uh, Tennessee seems to have a lot of playoff previews. Uh, Baltimore, <laughs> uh, I'll give them the split. At the Giants, I've seen them winning that game. At the Jets, I've seen them for sure winning that game. I don't, I don't see the Jets beating them at all. And then they end the season at home with Pittsburgh. So, it is not a super hard schedule. They have the talent, like we've all said. Uh, what does Vegas say? You got the numbers on Vegas, Coach? Yeah, yeah. Um, Vegas has the over-under line set at eight and a half games for the Browns. And once again, um, they don't know which way to go. They got minus 110 for the over, minus 110 for the under. So, <laughs> I mean, me personally, right I'm there, taking man, the right over. There. I, I, I'm, I'm going with the over um, with, with eight games. I, I have the Browns penciled in at nine and seven also. So, um, you know, you know, slipping one game here, probably losing the game, but they shouldn't have lost nine and seven. The Browns will probably fall in. And then, you know, as we kind of have a toss up between second and third in the division, it just depends on who wins the series between the Steelers and the Browns. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's going to come down to the, to, to who wins those divisional games that are, for the first time in a long time, it's going to be fun to watch. Uh, yes. That being said, we'll go right into the Baltimore Ravens. And not to start on a sour patch, uh, but they disappointed in the playoffs once again for the second year in a row. Um, I'm not surprised because I said that would happen. Uh, Jackson is an amazing talent. Super excited to watch. He has everything – but the accuracy in the arm. And once again, we saw a team that had no reason to beat them, beat them in the playoffs. And I think it getting to a point with Jackson that you have to put the pressure on him. This is make it or break it for you, kid. You want to be 
better than Michael Vick, you want to take that next step, you want to be that Patrick Mahomes, you want to be that Aaron Rodgers, I love your MVP play. I love the spinning move like Madden. I love all that. But you have to make those third and five passes. You have to make those plays in the playoffs. We all know you're going to be there. We're all going to watch. But you have to make, be able to make those plays to be considered one of the best quarterbacks probably ever to play the game. And I will say that if he makes those passes and we see him take the Baltimore Ravens back to the promised lands, he will be considered one of the best quarterbacks to ever play the game because we've never seen a dual threat like him and Patrick Mahomes to be able to throw the ball and run the ball. Michael Vick was super fun to watch, but he had no arm. He had an arm. He could throw it 200 yards, but he couldn't complete every pass, and that was his problem. Um, Johnny Box, am I right? Am I wrong? Give it to me. What do you think about the Baltimore Ravens? Once upon a midnight dreary as I pondered weak and weary. Are the first lines of the Raven by Edgar Allan Poe, which is where the Ravens got their name. Little tidbit of information. There you go. I ponder weak and weary when I think about the fact of how much I love the Baltimore Ravens as 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 an organization. How much I love Lamar Jackson in college. Loved him coming out of college. Saw Ozzie Newsom in his last year as, as as their GM trade up into the first round to get him and snatch him. And I said, man, this is a marriage made in heaven. This is going to work out. That's, I mean, that's really all they needed. And they, and he breaks my heart. He really breaks my heart, man, because he's got everything except that last little, a little salt on top. That, that, that last little pinch. Trouble. And that pinch is when you're in the playoffs, can you make, I know you can make throws on the run. I know you got the arm to get it there. You know, he's got a hell of an arm. I know you could escape, uh, you know, escape the rush. You could make moves uh, with your legs, you know, run around people, get first downs, keep the get, keep the drive going. I know you can do all that. But can you, under a rush like Mahomes did in the Super Bowl, make the throw that gets your team back in the game? Can you do that? You know, because Mahomes, yeah, Mahomes would throw, throw a forty-eight yard pass, but he'll also throw that little that little. Oh, just over the, the outstretched arms of the defender. Oh, he caught it. Oh, he scored. Mahomes can do that. If somebody gets that out of Lamar Jackson, the Baltimore Ravens will go back to the Super Bowl. Because that's really all they're missing. They even went just for fun because they don't have enough weapons. They went out and drafted J.K. Dobbins, the running back out of Ohio State, which was an absolute beast. You know, they have the defense. They obviously have the coaching staff. They have the front office. They have the running game again because now they got Mark Ingram and him. They have the line, although they lost uh, Marshall Yanda to, to, to retirement, which is probably, uh, again, a Pro Bowl, a Pro Bowl guard. But they I'm got sure enough to get to the Super Bowl. You know, yeah. Uh, you don't have to worry about who you lose because they don't have to draft. But, I mean, I, I personally think they are enough of a talented team and Lamar Jackson will make enough plays that he will get them to – the AFC Championship game against the Kansas City Chiefs. and But the only way they're going to get past that team is he's got to be able to make those throws when it counts in the playoffs. And if he can't, that's the wall that it's going to hit. And like you said, it's just going to be a fantasy that's never going to take that extra step. And this is going to be like, okay, this is as far as this guy's going to take us. And, and I know, and I would hate to see that because again, I love the Ravens as a, as a as a franchise. I completely envy them, and I love Lamar Jackson. Absolutely love Lamar Jackson. Kid from down here, you know, went to Louisville, Heisman Trophy, you know, first round pick, MVP, tremendous, tremendous talent. Just knows has a feel for the game, knows how to escape, knows how to make a play, but he's got to get that little pinch, man. Somebody's got to teach him to do that little pinch, and he'll take that next step. Look, there's – we for years had Tom Brady and Peyton Manning in the AFC back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and it was some of the most exciting games to watch. And not only that, you have a storyline. You have everything that you ask for as, as a sports fan, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, every year. What would it be if Lamar Jackson does figure it out to make those – you know, it's not about how strong you are. Maybe you have the little touch – 
um, and you float it over someone, it doesn't have to be a spectacular play, just make the completion. And that's what, to me, he has to learn. It's not about the flashiness. It's about just getting that first down when you need it, just making that play when you need to make that play. Um, what a storyline it would be to have Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, a repeat of like Tom Brady, Peyton Manning rivalry. Like for years to come, they're both super young. And for years to come, they're going to dominate the NFL. And that is going to be something to watch in the future. But like you said, like I said, he needs to figure that out. Coach Kelly, what do you think about the Ravens? Uh, is it just that or is there something else that, that you see in the Ravens that maybe maybe you do see them take the next step or you just don't? Give me your thoughts on it. Um. Well, let me say, let me first say, I do think that the Ravens will make a deep playoff run, but I do see some regression in the in the Ravens, and I say that because the NFL is loaded with a lot of smart people who study a lot of film, and I believe they have um, studied uh, Coach Harbaugh and and his um, offensive coordinator's playbook, and the league pretty much knows it's a very similar playbook to what they ran when they was in San Francisco together with Colin Kaepernick. So, um, you know, the, the, uh, in the playoff run where they lost their game, I kind of think that, you know, um, the team just studied the playbook and kind of knew uh, the plays and where they were going. But, um, I mean, with that being said, I mean, Lamar Jackson, I mean, he's still an electric player, um, exciting to watch. Um, I have to be honest. Coming when, when he was coming out of college, I was not too big on him at the spot where he got drafted. I mean, did I think he was going to be a great player in the NFL? Yes, I did. But for um, the spot where he got picked, I didn't think that it, uh, he, he was ready for that um, pick. Great draft pick in J.K. Dobbins. Um, he's another running back that can go with, it seems al almost like the ageless Mark Ingram. Be before you get to Dobbins, no, no, not to interrupt you, so – from you're saying, do you do you blame? Do you think not to blame anyone, but do you think the the playoffs for the play this year's playoff performance for the Ravens was that coaching? Was it was it all purely coaching? Like did they just get out coached completely, or did they get outplayed on the field? Um, it was physical. The game was the, the game where they lost. It was a physical game, but um, so I mean, I can't say it was some outplaying. But I think the coaching had a major role in it um, with, 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 with the, you know, with the, uh, the opposing team's coaching staff getting together and studying the Ravens' offensive playbook and how to slow, um, Mark, um, uh, slow Lamar Jackson down and slow, slow down um, the passing game and, and kind of eliminate the tight ends from that passing game also. Okay, yeah. Absolutely. Go, go. Keep going with Dobbins, man. Keep going. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you like okay. that. Okay, okay. Yeah, and, and, and I, I, I was just agreeing that uh, J.K. Dobbins is a great addition to uh, seems like the ageless Mark Ingram. Um, I, I kind of think he'll come in and fit right in that um, explosive uh, playbook. I'm um, good. Uh, J.K. Dobbins, as I remember, he has some good hands. Yes. Um, so, so, so that that will help tremendously guys. in the passing game, and maybe give an additional um, option for the pass for, for the pass attack with the Ravens. Yeah, yeah, I think I, I think they're 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 gonna I, look. I don't think we're gonna see the numbers that we saw from Jackson last year. Um, I he I can't think of any other way to take a step back. I mean, it, maybe it won't be much, but he had an amazing year as far as numbers. Uh, yeah, and they're gonna have to add. The threat, and maybe that's that's him. Um, not only a threat, but but option and different plays. And teams are gonna teams already know what you're gonna do. Like teams already know that the Ravens are gonna let Jackson just take over the game, mm -hmm. and he's gonna have to win games with his arm this year. Because I I believe that the Titans maybe brought out a little blueprint to to how to play the Ravens. Um, doesn't mean that I don't see them winning the division. Doesn't mean that I don't see them getting to the playoffs. They're going to get to the playoffs because they're too good not to get to the playoffs. They're going to win the division because they're too good not to win the division. Right. right. Um, but I don't have him in the AFC Championship game. I, I don't think um, – I would need to see something from Lamar Jackson this year in his arm during the season for me to think otherwise. 
if they're going to take that next step and we'll get to the season and we'll see how he's going to play. Uh, but if I don't see that in the season and I, and I and I see that he's beating people with his legs, I don't think they're getting past a team like the Bills. I, I think it's going to be them and the Bills in the playoffs and the better team will win. And I think the better team is the Bills. Um, that being said, what does Vegas have on the over and under? I, that's a horrible bet. I would never want to make that bet. <laughs> I'm not betting on the Rams. <laughs> The, the over and under line is set at 11 and a half. Jesus. Um, so, so, so it's plus 100 for the over and it's minus 125 for the under, which, I mean, to say that um, Vegas believes that um, the Ravens are going under 11 and a half games. I like the over um, for them. So I, I have the Ravens win 12 games. You yeah. know, uh, fourteen and two. No, I no. don't think. I don't think uh, that's going to happen. But twelve and four, um, I can see the Ravens pulling that off. So, so I, I'm I'm going dollar for dollar, and and uh, I'm gonna take Vegas money. Let uh, me. How about this? I'm not gonna go through the whole the whole schedule. I'm gonna find. I'm gonna find. Three games they're gonna lose. Okay. Just, you know, just because it's fun. Uh, Kansas City, week three. Okay. Uh, sorry, sorry. Week one, I see them losing to Cleveland. Week three, I see them losing to Kansas City. Um, let's go a little further down. Dallas, I don't see them being Dallas. I think Dallas is just going to turn it up this year. Um, and then they have at Colts. It's after their bye week, so maybe, may, maybe – after their bye week, the Colts have a very tough defense. They have Philip Rivers. They can control the clock. At home, I'm going to say they lose to, to, to the Colts away. There you go, four losses. Here's your, your Vegas. Everyone, put in your bets. I'm playing. Don't put in your bets. <laughs> Everyone relax. Put your money in your pocket. Bet responsibly. <laughs> yeah. It's your money. Do what you want with it. <laughs> We're not telling you to go play right now. <laughs> but that is the uh, – that's pretty much the AFC North. They don't have an easy schedule, per se, uh, but they don't have a super hard schedule. And they're just too good to, like, go through the whole schedule and tell you, oh, they're going to beat Cincinnati. Everyone knows they're going to beat Cincinnati. Everyone knows they're going to beat – you know, they get that rematch, Tennessee Titans rematch. Maybe that's another loss, but they get them at home. So, I think they beat Tennessee and they kind of – and I think they're going to pounce on Tennessee this year get a little revenge during the season. I, I think that's a horrible game for Tennessee. There's no way you're going into Baltimore after you after you, you beat us in the playoffs and you're going to beat us. No, that doesn't happen in Baltimore. Um, that being said, AFC North, Baltimore first place. We're going to say the Browns in second place. We're going to say the Steelers Browns. third place out of the playoffs. And uh, Joe Burrow, Cincinnati Bengals in fourth place because they're just not good enough to go anywhere else. Uh, Box, anything closing, please? Yes, actually, there's a lot. There's been a lot of talk going on on, on Twitter, on social media, and obviously with everything going on with COVID nineteen and the coronavirus, and you know other leagues are starting up. Uh, I just read today where the NBA tested all their players in Orlando, and all of them tested negative which is a very good sign for sports. I also read today where the NFL basically told the Players Association uh, that they don't have to play any preseason games, if I read that right, which is what they wanted. Um, so, you know, to, to protect their players. Um, and then I read earlier earlier over the weekend that Drew Brees and a couple of other players were talking about, you know, they want the NFL to come out and say, you know, player safety first. And I think the NFL, we talked about this earlier, uh, me and the chef. Uh, it's, I think it's. I think it's the best run league of any pro sports league. I think they're gonna get it together. I think they're gonna put it down on paper and say, "Listen, we have to protect our players. Yes, we're, we may have to play the season without fans. Yes, we may take a hit to our pockets. Uh, yes, next year's salary cap may go down sixty million dollars per team, but they're gonna get the money back when things go back to normal, which we know that they will. They're gonna make the money back tenfold in like a year." So let's just be safe. Everybody be safe. Be happy that we're hopefully on the verge of getting football back, getting sports back, and we can continue to talk about it for the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. I agree. I I think the difference between like let's say the MLS we we did talk earlier and let's say the difference between the NFL and like MLS that had a little bit of drama back and forth and I'm not gonna give you details because it's not a baseball show and I don't even know them. Um but I think the main issue is they players wanna care about their safety. The NFL just needs to put something solid in stone. I think there will be uh there 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 will be the NFL we are gonna see football. Maybe it's without a preseason. And you know what? Maybe that's something that a lot of people already wanted. A lot of people wanted to shorten up the preseason anyways. Maybe this is a moment for the NFL to go, you know what, let's give these guys two games in the preseason and just start the season because there are – it's such a physical game. And kudos to the NFL for taking care of their players, taking care of, of, uh, of, of what they have to take care of to get the season started. I hope and I, I pray to God that they do – get the NFL season started and we get some real football here very soon. Um, big shout out to all the leagues that are starting and will be starting soon. Hockey starting soon. I'm very excited about that. Uh, baseball, you know, um, but soon we will have NFL and the NFL will figure out how to get these guys back on a football field and give us something to talk about every week. Coach, you got anything before we get out of here? Uh, nothing too much. Um, just as we talked about the AFC North, I think it's a conference of some great coaches and some, of course, historically great teams and defenses. Um, I'm excited. I I I I want to see it happen. Hopefully, it can happen, and uh, players, coaches, and their families are healthy and safe with doing it. I agree. I agree. And once again, if you have not subscribed, there's a little button somewhere on your screen because I have not done this thing the right way. There's a button somewhere. Click that subscribe, like the video, comment, share the video, do whatever you got to do. Use all your network. This is In the Trenches. Thank you for joining us.